What's going on everybody? It's Super SP here and this is going to be a really special video. I hope you guys enjoy it and without further ado, welcome to the Ultimate Duelist Challenge. So what is the Ultimate Duelist Challenge? The Ultimate Duelist Challenge is a series loosely based off of Team APS's This Yu-Gi-Oh Card is Bad series. My aim with the Ultimate Duelist Challenge is to play a multitude of decks, archetypes, and duels with my good friend Dylan in order to make him a better deck builder and for myself to play all of these cards that I own and give you guys some fun along the way. So I hope you guys enjoy this. For week one, I chose Slifer and Obelisk the Tormentor. The reason I chose them was the Egyptian God decks were recently released and I thought this would be a perfect place to start the series. We have three of each deck to do on our deck building journey, so I'm going to hit it back to the cell phone videos and we're going to go pick up Dylan. Thank you guys for being here and I hope you enjoy the Ultimate Duelist Challenge Episode 1. Well, we're outside Dylan's house. We just called him. Told him we're outside. Waiting. He is still unbearable. Middle of June, I can only imagine how July is. Oh, there he is, with a target bag, ready. Are you ready to duel, duelist? No? This is the ultimate duelist challenge. Are you sure you're not ready? Oh, don't be like that. Why is that locked? Insanity. Say hi, Dylan. Hi, Dylan. I guess he's saying hi, Dylan. So, we're gonna get our coffees now, and uh, yeah, get ready to duel. It's gonna be awesome. I'll see you guys at the coffee I just shop. I can't believe I almost left without my wake up wraps, dude. That was like, I was so excited for those. So, we got our coffees. Mm -hmm. Three uh, one sugar. Very exciting. So I don't need my coffee to be too sweet. Well. We are on the road. We're gonna stop at the gas station. Dylan's gonna hit an ATM. And then we are gonna be heading towards the Cribbo. It's gonna be a great day. Lots of duels ahead. Obelisk the Tormentor versus Slife of the Sky Dragon. And uh... I like my red snakey boy. Oh, he likes his red snakey boy. Well, uh, we got a curveball in this duelist challenge. And you're gonna see what I mean, but there's gonna be a different curveball every week that we throw into these. I don't know. Uh, yes and no. You'll find out when we start the deck building. Well, but uh, yeah. I'm taking a ton of inspiration from Team APS on this. And I'm just sure unaware this is going. Right now, yes. Yes, oh, yes. He's up. Like the audience knows, but you don't know. It's like a Shakespearean play. Anyway. Like George Lucas would say. It's like poetry. Right? Exactly. All right. See y'all soon. I wanted to take a quick break. Talk to you guys and tell you how fucking delicious these were. Oh my god. Hmm. It's gonna be a good day. Hot. It's a little hot though. Anyway, next time you see us, we're gonna be deck building and explaining the challenge of Dylan. He probably already knows where this is going, but it'll get more difficult for him. I'm just hoping that he doesn't lose the match because he had game but he wasn't able to do it because he didn't have Slifer on the field. That would be Depresso Espresso. Oh my god, I almost want to add that to the bloopers later because I want to at the very end add a bunch of segments of bloopers and shit. We'll see, it's already it's recording, already, so yeah. it's already there. <clears throat> All right, so we're back at the house now. We've got our coffees. We're a little bit more energized, had a little bit of discussions, and we are ready for the Dual and deck setup. So I've got my three decks. I've got my three slifers. Amazing. And I cannot wait to slap around with Obelisk. So remember how I was talking about the uh, stipulation slash little challenge that I have built into this? Yes. Well, well, this is the ultimate duelist challenge. So we have to have some type of like win condition aside from just winning the duel. And I feel like these can evolve over time, but I wanted to keep it simple and entertaining for this one. So something like, I don't know, you have to win with your god. You do have to win with your god, but not the game, okay. just the match. All right. So if I say, say I take game one, 
and you take game two. Only our second win has to be with the guard. Yes. Okay. But if we're in game three, and say you have game on board, but you don't have Slifer on board, yeah. you cannot go for game. Mm. And same thing with me. I could not go for game unless I have Obelisk on the board and they're dealing yeah. the final damage. Now, uh, I'm not sure how this will evolve over time. Maybe we'll make it so you have to play one, ca one card. Or uh, I'm not really sure if we'll do the gods again or revisit them. But uh, who knows? Maybe a uh, sacred beast versus the Egyptian gods in the future. That sacred could be something beasts, fun. Beasts be gods. Sacred beasts versus elemental heroes. Oh, we do. GX theme. We do have a full elemental hero deck aside from malicious bane that could go up against a sacred beast deck. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Let us know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see. But we're gonna get these cracked open. We're gonna start sorting. If you guys want to watch through the time lapse of it, we're gonna have that available. And let's get to playing some Yu-Gi-Oh. Ghost Lifer. All right, three Obelisk the Tormentor, three Slifer the Sky Dragon, ready to be sorted, sleeves are out. Dylan, are you ready for the Ultimate Duelist Challenge Episode 1? Yes. Let's get right into it, start the power sort. So, how many cards in your deck? I finished at 41. 44. Yeah, I, uh, what's your, uh, what's your ratios at? Because I'll be honest, I was, like, having a difficult time being happy with the amount of monsters I had, but also being happy I've... with, like, the spells, because I wanted three ofs of certain ones, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I finished, let's see, so 41... I finished off at 8 traps, 18 monsters, and 25 spells. Yeah, see, I was actually having the same problem. I had way more spells than I did everything else. Mm -hmm. And I kept, like, feeling like that the spells weren't going to end up being the thing that won me the game as much as, like, we both have Soul Crossing, mm -hmm. so we can both Absolutely. tribute, yeah, we can both tribute each other's monsters, but my problem was I was always worried that if I hypothetically speaking, say I didn't play monsters and I was relying on you to have monsters, what if you not playing a lot of monsters and all you draw is spells or traps and both of us are just sitting there with nothing on the yeah. field? You know? I was, uh... I, I thought to myself, I'm like, I feel like regular ratios are something that I normally do, like in a EDO Pro. Typically, I'll see between 18... Not eight, yeah, depending on how many hand traps the deck runs, but 18 and 24 monsters is like the normal... And then you've got around uh, 12 spells and then usually 3 to 6 traps depending on what kind of deck it is. Sometimes 0. But, I don't know. You ready for this challenge, man? I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be fun. I am fucking ready. Let's go. Go Slifer. Go Obelisk. Fuck you. <laughs> so I'm playing Slifer today. I didn't really have too great of a plan. It's essentially just very basic. Draw as often and as quickly as possible to get Slifer out as quickly as possible. That's really it. Nothing too crazy. Very basic. So, of course, three copies of Slifer. I'm running three reactor slimes to get to Slifer. Uh, two Arima, the Wicked Wardens, because I can use him to search out, uh, what was it, Layer of Darkness? Yeah, so I can use him to get a Layer of Darkness. Uh, Escape Ghost, like with the Reactor Slime, just to bring out tokens. Yeah. Now I've got Breaker, and I have some back row removal. Uh, Nine-Tailed Fox, just more tokens and a potential summon from the grave. Beast King Barbaros, if I need a quick normal summon even though we'll only go down to 1900 attack. What does this do? Has okay. to look at his card to even know what it does. Well if it's a card I've never used. <laughs> 
I got 110 Spirit, the shooter, in case I need to bounce one of Super's cards back to his hand. Uh, Breaker, the Dark Magical Warrior, like with the regular Breaker, just spell removal. Uh, Millennium Seeker, only one running one of him. I don't remember what he does, I'll figure that out during the duel. One Electromagnetic Turtle. I mean, there's really no reason to run more than one since you can only use its effect once per duel. Uh, let's see. And my last monster, Caligo Claw Crow. Just as a special summon. Add one more body. As for spells, running three soul crossings, so I can use Supa's monsters to bring up my slifer. Uh, the true name. Ooh, just only two. Only two. You know, just a quicker way to get to Slifer. Two Book of Moons. Ooh. Nice little interruption. One Thunder Force attack. Ooh, only one. I really didn't feel the need to run more than one, honestly. Because I don't see myself really relying on it too often. Uh, I wanted to do two originally, but in order to slowing my deck down a little. I decided to only go with one Swords of Revealing Light. Classic Yugi. Yep. And speaking of classic, one Monster of One, since that's all we can have. One Harpy's Feather Duster. Yep. Same reasons. One copy. Nice back row removal. And then my field spell, Layer of Darkness. More tokens to bring out Slifer. And... Alright. A nice card to lead into the true name, Draw of Fate. Only running the one, though. Uh, doing Supply Squad. Mm. Just some more draw power. And my last spell, one copy of March of the Monarchs. Mm. Just so, uh, tribute, uh, tribute monsters, if it's unaffected by card effects. Ooh. And my last eight, my traps. I'm playing three Reckless Greeds. Because this may seem obvious to a lot of people. I just learned they don't stack. So if you play all three at once, you only have to skip two turns, not six. Well, six draws. So if I can play all three on the same turn, that's six, six cards for me. And I okay. only have to skip two draw phases. Okay. <clears throat> Two ultimate divine beasts. Don't remember what it does. I'll figure that out in the duel. Two metal reflect slime. Just a nice level wall and more material to bring out Slifer. And the last card, Mirror Force. Very nice. Very Finish nice. Off the Slifer the Sky Dragon deck. Will it work? Who knows. Dylan just got through his first deck profile and uh, was slight for the Sky Dragon, so I think he did a pretty good job. I'm going to be heading through my Oblast to Tormentor deck profile now with the three structures that I had. And um, yeah, mine has a little bit of a different approach, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you like this style of video, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really excited about this. If you think we should use the other camera to do the deck profiles, let me know. I can do it from a top-down view, but I thought just using the phone would be just as impactful. And this isn't a deck profile video. This is a fun time. This is the UDC. This is the Ultimate Duelist Challenge. And I will see you guys with the deck profile. There we go. How much time do I got? You got six minutes. All right, fantastic. All right, so to start my Obelisk the Tormentor deck profile, of course we are playing three copies of Obelisk the Tormentor. I am running three copies of Angel 01. This card is pretty OP. You can special summon it based on the levels of the other monsters in your hand, and uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty epic piece of uh, combo material. Then we've got Condemned Witch. This is going to allow me to search my Forbidden cards, as well as summon a level 4 Fairy from the deck. And that Fairy is Ra's Disciple. Over here, the next engine that I'm using in the deck is going to be Unmatched Dragon. If it gets destroyed, I'll be able to summon my Mare Mare. Tokens, summon Obelisk. I kind of looked at all the cards and I decided to myself, I'm just going to use separate engine pieces that are in the structure deck, try to put them together and see if there's anything I can do that can pop other stuff out. You know, 
Modern Yu-Gi-Oh bullshit, I guess is the best way to put it. Next, we're running the one hardened arm dragon, so that if I tribute this monster, my obelisk is unable to, I believe, targeted by card effects or destroyed by card effects. That monster cannot be destroyed by card effects, so. We got some protection. Evil Swarm, this is just an extender. If he has more monsters than me, I can special summon it from my hand. Nimble Mamanga, nimble, nimble, woo, woo, nimble, nimble. I'm very happy about this, playing three copies of Nimble Manga, and that rounds off the monsters. So essentially, we're trying to special summon. We want a special summon, we want tokens, and we want to turbo out Obelisk, since we cannot technically search him. But, we've got Divine Evolution, this card's OP, it's going to increase Obelisk's attack, and the effects of this card cannot be negated. Also, you can make one mon- one- yeah, you can- I can pop a card in the field, pop a bonus monster. And we've got three copies of Fist of Fate. This is my Obelisk card, also can't be negated. And this is uh, another form of board removal and blah, 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 blah. Destroy all spells and traps in the field. So I can also pop all of his spells and traps. Harpy Feather Duster, pretty nice. Triple Soul Crossing, the exact same thing as Dylan. So tributing his monsters, turboing out our God card. Triple Forbidden Droplet. Double forbidden droplet. Oh, I mean, wow, wow. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Sorry. That would have been a good structure. Deck. That would be awesome, right? No, forbidden chalice. Sorry, I got over eager. Over eager. A little bit jealous here, boy. Oh, it's uh, yeah, whatever. It's okay. But forbidden chalice. I'm gonna be searching this off my condemned witch, and it's just a little bit of interruption. Same as what he's got going on in his double summon, so I can double normal summon some of my monsters. Monarch Stormforth to tribute more of his monsters. Okay. Harpy Feather Duster, Spell and Trap Removal, Different Dimension Capsule in two. Search my Obelisk. Hopefully, he doesn't stay banished. That would be unfortunate. One Monster Reborn and one Pot of Avarice to draw. Okay. Also, if for some reason all my Obelisks ended up in the graveyard, well, I'll pretty much be screwed. So, the one of of Pot of Avarice Shuffle is pretty down, nice. Yeah. We are playing three copies of Drowning Mirror Force because we cannot be floodgated by a Slifer. If he summons Slifer and I get floodgated from summoning because of a 2000 attack effect mm -hmm. on him, I'm pretty much... I lost. I pretty much lose the duel. So Drowning Mirror Force was something when I was looking in the deck I really needed to have. And then last, one level resist wall, special summon from the deck based on the levels of a monster I get destroyed, and that's on the field. That rounds off the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoy this challenge and this duel that me and Dylan are about to go through. And let's see who can take a match with their god card. Remember, we have to use the god card to win. Okay. So, deck profiles are in. Mm -hmm. Everything's ready to go. Of course. What do you think? I'm hoping it's going to be a challenge. Well, I mean, what do you think about the... We both took different kind of approaches to our deck building. What do you think about my special summon kind of like tactic in like storm the field with monsters idea versus kind of what you have going on with your deck? Yeah, so yours, yeah, storm the field, empty my field, tribute my monsters. Yes. And yeah, mine is just to get to Slifer as quickly as possible and oh. draw as many cards to power them up. That's really all I'm trying to do. Well, at the end of the day, it's who takes Duel 3 with their Egyptian God card that or matters Duel the two most. if it's one-sided. Uh, I hope it's not one-sided. Uh, no, no, we, I want it to be a challenge. We want this to be as fun as possible. This is going to be the ultimate duelist challenge. Thank you guys for sticking around as long as you have, and we are going to get right into dueling. Mm -hmm. See you soon.
and have a match of matches. A match of matches? Yeah. Well, all the marbles, one match? No, so best of three in matches. So you won match one, and we're gonna go into match two. And if I win match two, we go into match three. Let's go. All right. I need a summit's life or at least once. So, Oblis took game one, or match one, technically. Game one, game two, yes. So, now we're heading into a match of matches. Dylan's idea, I really liked it, and I'll be honest, I want to see what Slifer can do. I want to see a maximum powered Slifer deck in action. I want to see me get floodgated by that 2000 attack ridiculousness. And I just like to summon Slifer. <laughs> So, we're going to get into these duels, this video might be getting pretty lengthy, but I want it to be lengthy, and I hope you enjoy the quality and all the care I put into this. This cut is going to be jarring, it's going to be like the Jurassic Park series, it's going to be amazing and perfect chaos theory. Cut that out, oh, editor, cut that out. Oh my god. Why? You don't? You love <laughs> Jurassic Park. I do. Alright. Well, enough about, the, enough about the dinosaurs, back to the duels. <laughs> Alright, so... After the first match, because now we have decided we're doing a match of matches, we're going to be doing two Would more sets that? of duels. Would that be a set? Is that a set? I don't know. We'll or call the, it a set. Whatever, whatever tennis does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you What do you think is the strengths and the weaknesses of your deck right now? If you were to go back and make any edits, which I will allow, if you were to go back and make any edits to the deck. Is there anything you might decide to do differently after the first match? You not cutting it. Um, as far as adding and taking cards out, I really don't know. Cause like, I haven't really gotten to use my deck, I'd say.
All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the practice rounds. This is going to be the match of all matches. Match three, we've had food. We're not tired anymore. We've got our energy back. We had a caffeine crash after our coffees wore off, and I could tell that the energy was low, but we need to revamp it back up to 11. We're going to have some more fun. We're going to play these last few duels of the Obelisk versus Slifer challenge. Whoever can end the last match with a god card on the field and swinging for game takes the cake and will be crowned the winner of the Ultimate Duels Challenge, number one. You ready, Dylan? You enjoy your Frosty? Frosty's alright. Pretty delicious. Yeah. yeah. I like Frosty's too. Oh. You said oh. <laughs> Kitten's freaking out. Yes. Not good. This rain is not good. I'm gonna have to drive Dylan home in the rain. But it's okay. Let's get to dueling.
So, that was the end of the Ultimate Duelist Challenge Episode 1. If you guys made it all the way to the end, then you've already know Abbas the Tormentor was victorious. And although I did think that I was going to win this challenge, just because I've been watching videos on the archetypes and knowing kind of where I was going with my deck building, I'm sure next week Dylan's going to come back swinging, because we're going to be playing something he knows how to play. We are going to have to play Obelisk and Slifer again, but only one copy each, because these are going to be anime-themed duels. So... Thank you guys again for being here. I hope you enjoy next week's adventure. And from the bottom of my heart, Supa out. And I love you all. Peace.